students and you who are joining us online today. Our service continues with the acclamation. Blessed be the one, holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all our hearts are open, all the desires known, and from you your spirits are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts from our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy of your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Yes. 
servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maids the hand of their mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the provision of the God. Our second reading today is from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When you say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober, and for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined not us not for a wrath, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. So that whether we are awake, or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Give it to the one with the ten talents. 
For to those who have, much more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, go with him to the outer darkness, there, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. He was, again, 
like he had been all along, teaching them how they were to live faithfully in the world once he was gone. He was telling them that life and living is full of risks, but that if they trust in God and don't give in to fear, then they will continue to follow in the steps that he set out for them. It was the servants who took their exorbitant gifts and then took risks with them that resisted that temptation to just try and hold on to what they had been given out of fear. It was they who, in the end, entered into joy upon their master's return. Not because they had doubled his money, but because they didn't keep it hidden in the first place, because they lived like they really trusted God. But that third servant didn't risk or trust, and instead buried that money in the ground like a grave. He acted out of fear, which he readily admitted to. He was able to return coin for coin exactly what he was given. But there was a difference, because instead of living from this place of trust, he had let the fear keep him from going, just as surely as, as that fear had kept the gift he was given stewardship over from going. The servant learned this lesson, that the greatest risk of all is not to risk anything, to never care deeply or profoundly enough about anything to invest yourself deeply in it, to be too scared to give your heart away and in the process risk everything in the trust that you will gain even more. I think it's easy for us to see this lesson intellectually and agree with it, but it is much harder to live it because fear is a powerful force in our lives. It can spark in us fight or flight in any given situation. But I think at its most insidious, fear has a way of manipulating us into clinging to it, into putting it at the very center of our lives, binding us in effect to our fear, instead of binding us to God. Jesus knew this. It's why he told this story at the end of his time with his friends. He loved them. And he knew that his actions in Jerusalem had set these events into motion. And he rightly guessed that once everything shook out in the days to come, what would his friends do? They would turn and find themselves locked in that upper room. Locked in what are we told? Locked in fear. But he wanted so much more. He wanted them to live lives of hope and love, not fear. <clears throat> Jesus wants us, too, to live lives of hope and love, not fear. And so he told them this parable to call them and to call us to a fullness of life that is built on God's love every day and in all of our actions. Friends, God loves us beyond nature. There is nothing that you can do that will make God love you more, and nothing that you can do that will make God love you less. God loves you beyond measure, more than talents can even be counted. And God made us to love abundantly and extravagantly. Doing this, especially in tumultuous times, is risky. And we can fear, feel fearful doing it. But this is our call as followers of Christ. And when we do it with our whole hearts, we bury nothing. For love, like those talents, only truly has value when it is circulated in the world. Let us live this way.
are invited to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God from God of the of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was the carnage of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, that we acknowledge our baptism and the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the Church Universal, its ministry and the mission of the Gospel, may we be faithful to God's Word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For the well-being of creation, for those who work in the fields, for seasonable weather, and for the equitable sharing of the fruits of the earth, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For peace and justice in the world, and for those in authority, May we all work for the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, and lonely, let us be beacons of God's love and compassion to bring them comfort. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may they know God's presence in their distress. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray today for those in need of comfort or healing. Paul, Charlotte, Sarah, Amelia, Sally, Mia, Phyllis, Debbie, Jen, Marge, Mary, James, Frank, Paul, Becky, John, Rich, Marianne, Cindy, Bill, Linda, Ellie Marie, Sally, Zach, Liz, Mary Lou, Judy, Luke, Ozzy, Jan, Phil, Jen, Pauline, Pat, Nelson, Frank, Debbie, Holly, Tegan, Hannah, Jim, Kelly, Paul, the Winkler family, Tommy Neff, Jim and Michelle. Are there others? For those preparing for marriage soon, for those expecting babies soon, Kelly and Sam, Jenny and Mike, are there others? For those serving in the military and their families, especially Will, Bryson, Eric, McKenna, Brennan, and Kaylee. Are there others? Let us pay, pray for peace in the Holy Land. And let us pray for rain. In thanksgiving for children, family, and teachers. We pray for those who grieve. Ty, 
Castell family, the Winkler family, the Guardian family, the Castle and Jackson families. And we pray for those who have died. Roger Castell, Gary Guardian, and Kimberly Jackson. Are there others? Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you, our Lord. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we know we have hurt. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be more light in your will and have wealth in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, Lord Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all things and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. May the peace of Christ be always with you. Peace, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Before I begin with announcements, can I just, uh, can you all just admire the wonderful harvest display for Thanksgiving? Um, yeah, thank you to uh, Ashley, who put this in the books, and for the altar flowers, which we will commemorate uh, soon. So just a few notes for our life together. First of all, thank you to everyone who was able to supply parts of the Thanksgiving meals. We were able to deliver 10 full meals in our marionette, and I know that the need is really great in our community this year, and uh, the meals were given out, I believe, yesterday or Friday. So thank you to everyone who was able to contribute to that. As you will notice in your insert, in your bulletin, Advent and Christmas are just around the corner and indeed our angel <coughs> tree is up. So if you would like to um, purchase gifts and wrap them and bring them back, we have 10 families from Mount Airy Net that we are collecting gifts for. And I believe the gifts need to be returned by Sunday, December 10th. So we just have a few weeks on this. So um, I'm sure that there will be some angels over by the angel tree to explain the tag process after the service if you need it. But I hope that if you are able, you can be generous to help those in our community for Christmas. That would be greatly appreciated. The first Sunday of Advent this year is December 3rd. Oftentimes it's um, Thanksgiving weekend, but not this year. So December 3rd is the day that we will be gathering between services here to make Advent wreaths for you to take home. So hope you will come early on the 3rd for that. It's always a lot of fun. And also I will have out Advent devotional materials for the whole family. And then you can see on the back of your bulletin that there are two formation opportunities for adults on the 2nd and 3rd Sundays of Advent as well. I'm not going to talk about Christmas services yet. We're going to get through Thanksgiving, and then I will talk about Christmas Eve. Um, but that's it for announcements. Before we go to Thanksgiving, though, I would like to invite forward Betsy, who has um, something to share with us. Good, perfect. Okay, uh, I'm Betsy Davis, and I'm part of the Basket Raffle and Silent Auction Fundraiser Committee. And we'd just like to take a moment today to um, make some acknowledgments and thanks for the people who participated in huge ways. Um, and also, just that will also give you a little hint about some of the things that go on behind the scenes. So I'd like our main basket brigade to come forward. Um, that would be Jim Fader, Cheryl Windsor, Karen Delaney, Karen Laramore, and Marilyn Hancock. If you guys would come forward just for a second. Sorry, I thought you knew you had to do that. <laughs> we don't have everyone here today. Um, so the first thing that happens for the basket raffle fundraiser is that we collect donations from parishioners, from the thrift shop, and many of the town businesses 
are generously donate um, to this cause. They begin, these ladies begin uh, sorting donations in late July to create and wrap and tag each of the, this year it was 86 baskets, and then they move them up here uh, for sales to begin in September. Um, also keeping records of what's in the baskets and uh, writing thank you notes to special donors. In addition, two of our team members, myself, Betsy Davis, and uh, Jeannie LaRue, uh, with much assistance from Marilyn um, Hancock, worked together to gather items of slightly higher value that we put into the 31 silent auction um, items as you probably saw if you were here. Um, we do things like writing out the details, re researching the values of those items and what they are and how, you know, what we can, what our bids, setting bids, etc. Um, once the raffle sales are over and the event itself is over, the big day arrives to choose winners. And this year, Deb Schaefer, is she here? She's here, I don't know. Okay, sorry. She joined our team to direct and oversee the winner's day Day drawings, calls, and deliveries. Um, that's a very challenging but rewarding uh, job. You get to see the happy faces. I happen to be here for part of it, and some of the people are literally skipping in the door. It's very, very rewarding. Um, additionally, our transportation chairman, Don Windsor, and his assistant, Howard LaRue, coordinated the loading of all the baskets, tables, supplies as well as delivering them downtown to the Oktoberfest and then returning them up here uh, that evening. Um, we would be remiss without mentioning the support from our St. James Scouting Troops, Troop A29G and A29B. They helped with muscle power to move and set up tables and canopies uh, both here and downtown. Um, and even though she isn't here uh, in the church today, we want to acknowledge our parish administrator, uh, Laura Davis. She is such a valuable member of the team. She's always more than willing to help us with this. She, has, she uses her administrative skills to request online donations, our permit, all of that. She also enthusiastically uses her incredible creative talents to offer ideas and make signage wherever needed. She's much appreciated by the raffle, by the basket brigade. That's what we call ourselves, by the way, the basket brigade. Um, further thanks to all of you who helped in so many ways. Whether you helped to set up tables, take down tables, move baskets, call winners, launder the tablecloth, sell tickets all day Saturday or any other time. Um, there's a myriad of ways that we got help from you all, the parish. And we'd like anyone who participated in any way to stand up where you are for a second. Just stand up so we can see like what it took. Yes, I think to, now is the time for everyone to get around and applause. <laughs> but really it just takes a fantastic parish. <laughs> um, we look forward to changes that we're gonna try to implement for next year so that everyone can help uh, be involved in our basket brigade. Many of us have been doing this for a long time and we'd love to get some new, uh, new eyes, new hands helping. That will include um, basket sessions on, in the evenings and on weekends so that people who work full time can join us. Please keep our ministry in mind when you volunteer to volunteer and help out next summer. We'll start that next summer. And finally, we want to say thank you to the parishioners for generous donations of items, as well as for many, many purchases all throughout our event to help us reach the grand total of $8,530 this year, which is our highest profit in an event ever. fact I'll leave you with is this. Since the basket raffle first started in 2007, we have raised a total of $85,471 for the church. So that's another amazing accomplishment. Thank you all so much for letting us take this opportunity to just share with you um, all the involved and thank you all for everything you've done.
You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels in the same Lord praise.
give you thanks and praise that when we were so far off, you let us in your son and brought us home. The land of the king, we declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the spirit of light give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God of Abraham and Sarah and of Jesus Christ for your sister Nancy, the Holy Spirit who broods over the earth as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.